Hi, and welcome to Top Farmers Know How. I'm Sean. Mastitis is the most common disease of dairy cattle. It is estimated that a mastitis problem would cost an average sized New Zealand dairy herd around $15,000 in lost milk, treatments, increased culling and time each year. Understanding what causes mastitis will help you put strategies in place to control it on your farm. Mastitis is inflammation of the udder tissue and is most commonly caused by bacteria entering the udder through open teat ends. Once a quarter becomes infected, milk production, milk quality and the welfare of the cow all suffer. The cow's udder is built to prevent bacteria from entering. The teat canal is lined by a modified skin layer that opens during milking and folds up after milking, closing the teat end. If bacteria do get in, the cow sends white blood cells into the udder to fight the infection. The white blood cells are called somatic cells, and you can measure these on an individual cow or herd level to get an idea of the presence and severity of mastitis. The effectiveness of a cow's immune response depends on her being well fed and as free as possible from stresses such as other diseases and poor weather conditions. To assist the cow's natural defences, it is important to keep teat ends as clean and dry as possible. It is also important that we use an efficient milking technique that doesn't cause damage to the teat duct or the teat opening so that it can close completely and quickly after milking. The entire milking process, right from when cows are brought in from the paddock, should be as stress-free as possible to assist with this process. When the cow's mastitis defences break down, the resulting infection is either clinical or subclinical. Clinical mastitis is when cows have actual visible signs. These signs can include clots or flakes in the milk, redness, swelling, pain or firmness of the quarter. Clinical mastitis is much more common in early lactation than later in the season and is often associated with very high individual cow somatic cell counts. It is usually caused by bacteria found in the cow's environment such as strep uberus. Subclinical mastitis is when cows have high somatic cell counts but their milk and quarters look normal. Subclinical mastitis usually causes lower individual cow somatic cell counts than clinical mastitis but this can easily go undiagnosed and the numbers of infected cows can build up over time, resulting in a significant milk quality problem. It is often caused by contagious bacteria such as Staph aureus, which get moved around from cow to cow during milking. For an individual cow, subclinical mastitis doesn't have a seasonal pattern like clinical mastitis, but on a herd level it is more of a concern late in the season, as production drops and more cows become infected. What you do to manage mastitis depends on what is happening with your cows. New Zealand's seasonal calving pattern makes it easier to focus control strategies on the cow's stage of lactation. Dairy NZ's Smart SAM program does just this, and their website is an excellent source of information about managing mastitis in a seasonal system. At calving, Mastitis control focuses on minimising stress to the animals, practising good hygiene, identifying and treating cases as early as possible, and ensuring that cows entering the milking herd have a normal somatic cell count. Later in lactation, milking technique becomes more important as we concentrate on preventing the spread of subclinical mastitis between cows. At dry off and over the dry period, you can cure existing infections to prepare cows for next season and provide protection to keep environmental bacteria from causing new infection through to calving. You can also cull cows or quarters which are unlikely to cure over the dry period. Watch the rest of our Top Farmers Mastitis and Dry Off videos for mastitis control strategies at different times of the year.